Hello guys, my name is Madhur and welcome to my channel. This is the 37th tutorial in the series of tutorials on Unix shell scripting. In this tutorial, we're gonna encounter the case selection statement for the first time. And um, if you guys remember that when I discussed the if statement with you, I told you that there are four selection constructs that Unix provides us and three of them we've already discussed. And uh, those three are the if statement and the if then else statement and the if then elif else statement and we've also studied the nested if else statement which is not a separate statement but just a variation of the standard if else. So what I'm going to do in this script is I'm going to ask the user to enter a character and then I'll check whether that character is a lowercase alphabet or an uppercase alphabet or a digit or a special symbol or uh, if it is not one character the user has entered but more than one character is right and in each of these um, cases we uh, display appropriate messages. So uh, uh, let's get started. On the first line, I'll use the echo statement and ask the user to enter a character. And uh, you know what? I'll uh, probably save the script file before uh, you know typing in the code because uh, I like syntax highlighting feature of this text editor. So uh, I'm gonna give it the name case extension sh and I'll save it in my home folder as I usually do. And uh, on the next line, I'll use read to store uh, the input in a variable called var, right? And uh, now we have to get inside the case block. And the way you do that is by typing in the keyword case, that is case. And then you'll have to use a control variable. And in this case, uh, since our character is stored in the variable var, var is going to be our control variable. And uh, I'll use the dollar symbol and var because I'm interested in the value of var and not just uh, the string var. And uh, then you'll have to give a space and type in another keyword. And this one is in, right? And this would indicate the shell that we are now going to enter inside the case block. So, you know, whatever commands you see or whatever cases you see, they, they all belong to, you know, the case that's controlled by the variable dollar pair, right? So I hope there isn't any confusion uh, up till now. And uh, now we have to check whether the character is a lowercase alphabet or not. And the way you do that is by not typing in characters from A to Z like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H up till Z. You don't do that, right? Instead, what we do is we use uh, the square brackets meta characters and uh, you simply uh, type in your two square brackets, right? The opening bracket and the close bracket. And in between these brackets, you type in the range of values with which you want $var to be matched. And, uh, you know, I'm going to start with small a, of course, because that's the first lowercase alphabet. And I'm going to extend it to small z, then that's the last lowercase alphabet. So this uh, variable will be matched with not just a and z, but all the alphabets that you have, all the lowercase alphabets that you have between A and Z, right? So isn't that amazing? I mean, imagine if you would, uh, if you were to do this using if else, then you would obviously have to use the or operator 24 times, like, you know, check if uh, dollar var is equal to A hyphen O, dollar var is equal to small b hyphen O, dollar var is equal to small c. So, you know, that would obviously consume a lot of time unnecessarily. So after typing in this, I'm gonna type in the closing pattern and, uh, what this is going to do is this is going to instruct the shell to now get inside the case that is represented by this range of values right here, right? So first we got inside the case block and now we are going to get inside the block of a range of values that are represented by this case right here, right? So uh, inside this block, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use echo to display a message like you entered a lower case alphabet right and uh, to get out of this uh, case just this case what I'll have to do is I'll have to use a semicolon twice right so if I type in semicolon twice that would instruct the shell that you know we're out of this case now and we can move on to something else so now we'll have to uh, type in the code for the next case and before that, we will have to tell the shell what is the range of values with which we want uh, our variable to be compared. And in this case, it will be capital A to capital Z, right? And of course, I'll put my closing parent here. And on the next line, I'll type in the statement that I want to be executed if the variable lies 
within uh, this range here. So what do I print in? You entered an upper case alphabet, right? And on the next line, just as I did in the previous case, to move out, I'll have to type in semicolon twice. Okay, so now we have to cover our next case, which is going to be for digits. So the range of values would be from 0 hyphen 9, because these are the digits known to us. To get inside the case, again, the closing parent. On the next line, the echo statement, you entered a digit. And uh, let me put a full stop there. And uh, on the next line, to move out of the case, again, two semicolons. And uh, now, if any of these cases are not executed, and why would that happen? Dollar VAR would be first compared to all the values that lie between small a and small z. And if uh, a match would be found, then this echo statement would be executed. But if a match would not be found, then we would compare the value of uh, the variable VAR with the, the values within the range capital A to capital Z. And if a value, if a match would be found, then this echo statement would be executed. But if not, we would get to this case. But if suppose uh, we type in J as the input. Now J, small j, lies between small a and small z. So this echo statement would be executed and we wouldn't really execute this case or this case or any of the cases that would follow and we would simply move out of the case block, right? Because uh, our condition would be met in the very first case. So, you know, uh, we would get here only if uh, none of these cases have uh, been executed. So on the next line, I'm going to begin a new case and this one will be executed if all the three cases above have failed, right? And uh, that's going to be to check if the uh, character is neither a small case alphabet, nor a capital case letter, nor a digit, but what? A special symbol. So uh, I'm going to use the question mark meta character and I haven't ever spoken about it yet. And what the question mark uh, represents is it it means um, one character, right? So it substitutes, it, it's basically a substitution for uh, one character. And the asterisk, as you must be remembering, is, uh, you know, is a substitution for everything. You know, if you, if you use asterisk in a directory, then it means uh, everything that you have in the directory. And if you use it for input, then it means uh, all the inputs that have been provided. So, you know, if it's one character, then it would be in one character. But if there are more than one characters, then an asterisk would represent all the characters. So um, in this case, the echo statement would have to print out echo, you entered a special symbol. Okay, and uh, to move out again, two semicolons. And on the next line, we would have to cover for uh, more than one characters, right? Because that's the only thing left now. So the asterisk symbol and the closing parent. And on the next line, we'll use echo to display another message. And this one would be, you entered more than one characters, right? And with this, our script work is over. And what I'll have to do is, Firstly, obviously, I'll have to exit this case. And after exiting this case, I'll have to close my entire case block. And the way I would do that is by typing in the keyword case, but this time in the reverse order. So it would be E-S-A-C, right? It's pretty, uh, it's analogous to what we did for if, right? With if and F-I, we have a case and uh, ESAC, as you can call it. I call it ESAC, right? So I'm going to save the script file and I'll... Uh, just a second. So I have my terminal here and uh, let me first uh, maximize it for you. And uh, I'll execute the script by typing in sh space the name of the script which is case.sh. When I type in, I press the enter key, it asks me for a character. So if I type in small y here, then it would tell me that I entered a lowercase alphabet. And if I would uh, type in capital G here, then it would tell me that I entered an uppercase alphabet. And if I would type in a number like uh, 5, then it would tell me that I entered a digit. And if I would enter a symbol such as the pound sign or, um, you know, uh, the percentage symbol, then in both cases it tells me that I entered a special symbol. And if, in any case, I would, uh, you know, 
uh, type in more than one characters and press the enter key then it would tell me that I entered more than one characters right so that's what the script does I hope you've got the basic idea behind it and uh, you know the purpose behind the script was to just uh, make you guys familiar with the case statement and we will be uh, you know probably going through a few more applications of case in the coming tutorial so if something is not clear to you guys uh, in this script just hang on and uh, maybe in the coming uh, scripts I'll uh, you know explain the case statement uh, the working of it in a better way and uh, you'll probably be able to understand it then so um, thank you so much for watching this one I'm running out of time otherwise I would have walked you guys through the script once again but uh, in the next tutorial I promise I'll clarify things for you in case you have any doubts so thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next tutorial please subscribe to my channel